Hi, I'm Pauline Roots from Derivan. I'm here today to show you a project. I'm going to show you how to take a picture that you like and put it onto a canvas so you can have it on your wall. I've chosen two drawings that I'm going to show you how to get from here to a canvas. The project sheet is available on our website. It has all the stencils, information that you need to download. Go for it. Let's go and have some fun. Get the paints out. Okay, for step one, we're going to have to get our image from our photograph onto our paper. For those of you that feel comfortable with drawing your image, you can draw it straight onto your canvas. But for those that aren't comfortable with drawing it, my suggestion is that you start by drawing it onto some blank paper. And you can even go so far as to trace it. Blow up your, your image of your zebra to the size of the canvas that you want and then you can actually trace it on onto tracing paper. Once we've drawn our images you make sure that they are clear and defined and you make sure that they have good strong lines. This makes it easy for you to transfer it onto your canvas. Which image are we going to choose? Let's go for this one today. Once we've chosen our image we then have to get it onto our canvas. So the easy way to do it, turn your image upside down, look at where your image has may come through on the other side and then go back to school and let's just colour it in. Try and keep your lines even and together so that when you transfer your image onto the canvas it will all come through nice and clear. Don't make little simple little colouring ins because it won't transfer onto your canvas. It has to be nice and bold. Place your image carefully because remember the back that you've just coloured in is like carbon so it's going to make marks if you're going to be too rough with it. I've made this image so that it will go down to the bottom of the board in the sense of a canvas that has edges, you will be painting over the edges. Now a quick little hint to make sure that you have your canvas in the right spot, because we will have to come back to this later, is put a little mark in the corners, in two places. This shows you where your paper has to sit. You can even just put one on the corner very gently. And that way then, when we come back and we put these lines in, you will be in the right spot. Now we're ready to actually start putting on our image. For this purpose, I like to use a, a biro um, because it has a good sharp point and it's a regular point. A pencil can wear down for this and also a coloured biro shows you where you've been. So I only want the outside line put on. And that's all you have to draw on this particular instance. So let's start. Start at the bottom and work your way up. Remember, don't press too hard with the back of your hand. You're only using your biro at the moment. These lines around the mane can just be little squiggles. Don't try and get in every little minute detail. We're just going for rounded, smooth lines because this is going to separate our background and our foreground. Now that is quick and simple and then when you remove your paper we have an image. Now the fun begins and literally just using very easy smooth motions backwards and forwards cover the entire background but remembering that we have to keep the center image clear. So go to it, paint that and then when you're completed the background and the background is dry I want you to paint white all on the inside and that will require two layers. The background of straw painted and you have your foreground of white painted you need to place 
your stencil very carefully looking for the marks that you have on your canvas and then you can begin tracing all the inside lines on. So let's start tracing those. Now I'm looking at my photo and I can see that my black lines begin here. So this is black, this is black. So following it through a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. I'm using the number three brush because the size of this canvas that I've chosen still needs you to use very fine detail. And this brush enables me to get into the very fine little corners. Make sure that your coverage is complete. You don't want any grey lines. Just want it to look nice and thick and black. Right. On the eye, if you have a problem getting the eye with the white spots in it, don't panic because we can actually put that on a later date and define it a bit more with white paint. So let's mix a bit of our white and black together, white and folk black and we'll make a nice grey. Something good in the middle that's going to give us a good definition. To me, that is a good colour, a very definite difference between the black. Let's use our number three brush again, and we're just going to make some very fine little feather strokes along the entire edge of the mane. If you hold your brush and just use the tip, for feather strokes, it's important to keep the end of your brush. Don't feel afraid to turn your work around to make it easier to use. Keep doing that until you've come to the end. Now for a bit of definition, you can add some of the black to the mane and also give it some longer strokes in the mane. And this way then it's proving that the mane isn't a block it actually has got separate. Now let's not forget, he's got a chin. And you can also see he has a mouth and he has nostrils. So don't forget to put those in as well. Now let's give him a little bit of a lip and we'll put the mouth in. Once you're satisfied with that, we have completed it. So just very carefully finish off those lines. Make sure they're all nice and smooth. And then we'll go to the next and final step. Now that we're at the end and you've looked at how satisfied you are with your actual paint, we can sign it and I've chosen to sign it with a black so I've chosen the folk black to put my signature on 
Signatures are important because in 10 years time, you'll look back and you've laid claim to your painting. You're proud of it. Also put a date on the back too. Notice the edges. Very important to see how that looks. Once you have completed your painting and you've signed it, make sure that we put a sealer on it and this will protect it for years to come. Well, what a great session that one was. I hope you all had as much fun as what I did. These are the two finished projects. Gives you something a little bit more to aim for. So go and create two. Choose a different background if you like. Make it original, make it yours. Go for it and have some fun. Experiment and play. Yours in paint, Pauline Roots.